We have chosen to examine female painters in the early 20th century, exploring how their various influences impacted their art. We have each chosen an artist who rose to prominence in our home countries and how their unique experiences as women and minorities were reflected in their art and careers. Ogura Yuki from Japan, Amrita Shergill from India, and Maria Blanchard from Spain. They are each distinct figures in their circles, developing their own art styles which set them apart from their contemporaries. Although they have fallen into the background of history, we intend to hold their talents up to view. Ogura Yuki was a Japanese Nihonga painter born in 1895 in Otsu City in Shinga Prefecture. Nihonga was a traditional Japanese art style and Ogura Yuki was considered a Nihonga master. At the end of the 19th century, the Japanese art world was split into two, Western art styles and traditional Japanese art styles. Western style art was more popular during the Meiji era, and the Japanese style art was losing popularity. But Ogura Yuki was able to keep Japanese art, more specifically the Nihonga art style, alive by merging Eastern and Western styles. Ogura Yuki was a minority as her art style was uncommon, and being a woman in a male-dominated industry at the time made her a minority. Girls bathing is the first piece I wanted to bring up. It is a piece where two girls are in a wooden bathtub with steam covering most of the background. This piece is relevant as Yuki did not give up when rejected by the male-dominated Japan Art Institute. This piece was first sent to the Japan Art Institute exhibition in 1925, but was rejected and a year later, she entered the painting to the Kakhekai exhibition, where the senior artist from the Japan Art Institute took interest. In 1932, she became the first woman member of the Japan Art Institute in a group dominated by men. It is not said that gender played a role in her rejection the first time, but during that time, women did not have equal rights, freedoms, and education for women was not encouraged. Women bathing is the second piece I wanted to bring up. This is a piece where two women are in a bath with one woman sitting in the tub and the other sitting on the edge. This piece is relevant because it allowed her to gain back her respect. In 1938, she married a man named Ogura Tetsuji, who was 73 when Yuki was 43. The age gap was controversial as people assumed that she was going to give up on her art after getting married. This caused the price of her art to fall, but after entering women bathing in 1938 to the Japan Art Institute's premier exhibition, she was praised for her piece, being simplified and abstract and returned to the top of the art world. Amrita Shergill was born in 1913 in Budapest to Hungarian and Indian parents. At age 8, her family moved to India, and at age 16, she moved to Paris to pursue art. Here she began to receive recognition. At age 20, she was the first Asian person to win a gold medal at the Paris Salon for her painting Young Girls. Her work examined the female and the impoverished experience, as well as ruminations on queerness. In 1935, Shergill returned to India, saying she felt haunted by an intense longing, and that in some strange, inexplicable way, there lay her destiny as a painter. During this time, India was on the verge of independence from Britain, and artists were encouraged to pursue tradition in favor of creating a distinct national style. Shergill's painting style developed, combining post-impressionist methods learned in France with the styles of early Indian Rajput miniatures, which she admired for their use of high contrast and bright color. She was also inspired by the Ajanta cave paintings, which she considered to be an eternal example of pure painting. She traveled the country, painting what she observed of people living in poverty and in rural areas, once saying, as soon as I put my foot on Indian soil, my painting underwent a change not only in subject and spirit, but in technical expression, becoming more fundamentally Indian. I realized my artistic mission then, to interpret the life of Indians, and particularly of the poor Indians pictorially, to paint those silent images of infinite submission and patience, to depict their angular brown bodies. This sentiment and artistic influence appears in works such as Mother India and Haldi Grinders. Shergill was particularly proficient at, at depicting the female experience. 
Drawn to women but conflicted with her sexuality, this sentiment appears in several of her paintings. For example, Two Women, a piece believed to represent the close relationship and mutual longing between her and a female peer. Her paintings reflected her own split sense of identity as both Indian and Hungarian, as well as bisexual. She depicted Indian women differently from her peers at the time, who often showed them as content and compliant figures. She showed the reality of their lives, at times despondent and lonely, as displayed in her work Three Girls. She yearned for a sense of belonging, expertly conveying her emotion through the use of color, light, and subjects in her paintings. Her works tell stories of the nuanced aspects of being a woman living in rural India, embodying the depth of the female psyche in a way her male contemporaries were unable to. Although most of her recognition came after her untimely death at age 28, Amrita Shurgill has come to be considered an integral part of Indian art history. She is considered one of the nine gems of Indian art and one of the nation's first significant female artists. Maria Blanchard is a Spanish-based artist from the late 19th and early 20th century. Blanchard was born in Santander, Spain in 1881. She was well known for her unique style of cubism used in her paintings and her emotional driven artworks. Being born with a couple deformities such as dwarfism, her family still pushed her to move on. Being pushed by her parents to succeed, Blanchard moved to Madrid where she was taught by some of the best Spanish artists such as Emilio Sala, Fernando Alvarez, and Manuel Benito. Self-Portrait 1921 This painting is a self-portrait of her. In this painting, you can see Blanchard sitting down. She paints herself without hiding any of her physical deformities and not fearing the feeling of her being judged for them. In an era where female painters aren't yet accepted or respected by other painters is hard in itself, let alone having what she has. But this does not stop her from pursuing what she loves. Blanchard moved to Paris where she met other Cubist artists and began to develop her own unique style of Cubism. Seated Woman, 1928 in this painting, you can see a woman sitting on a chair near a table. This painting is a prime example of Blanchard's paintings being driven off emotion. In 1927, a year prior to this painting, one of her closest friends, Joan Gris, passed away. Blanchard entered a state of depression. This painting uses dark colors such as browns, blacks, and grays that truly represent the emotion she was going through. This is a noticeable difference from her earlier paintings where she uses colors such as bright blues and reds. Four years later, at the age of 51, Blanchard passed away. Being one of Spain's top female painters and often compared to Frida Kahlo due to them both being female painters in the same era, both having physical deformities and both overcoming unjust obstacles, Blanchard is truly an inspiring artist. These women had many shared experiences as artists, working hard to get the recognition they deserved and to produce art that was meaningful to them and to their peers. Although impactful during their time, they have not been remembered well by history. It's important to look critically at the artists that we are taught to believe are the most important and wonder what it is that allowed them to reach the level of status and acclaim that they have received while others fall into obscurity. History is often biased and it is up to us to dismantle outdated beliefs. We hope you have learned something new today about these three artists, as well as the countries they came from. Thank you all for listening, and that has been our presentation.